Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Joffe. I'm Vice President and Medical Director for Alberta Health Services, and I'm here today representing the entire PPE Task Force. Today, I'd like to briefly address some issues related to transmission of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. We've talked about this before, but I'd like to provide a very brief update. Over the last 14 months or so, AHS has been very closely monitoring information and research as it has emerged from around the world related to COVID-19 and the best practices for protecting our staff and physicians. Our PPE task force has considerable expertise. We have expertise in workplace health and safety, in infectious diseases, in infection prevention and control, as well as in clinical operations and procurement. And we have been meeting regularly throughout this pandemic in order to provide the best guidance that we can to protect our staff and physicians. We've been monitoring scientific literature and guidance from various organizations such as the Public Health Agency of Canada, the World Health Organization, and the US CDC. And over time, as information has emerged, we have gradually adapted our guidelines to ensure that we are providing current and best practice. Let me emphasize that our primary and really our sole responsibility is to ensure that our staff and our patients are protected. We take this responsibility very seriously and keeping our staff and our patients safe is our priority and is the basis for all of the decisions that we make. There's been recent discussion, particularly in some of the mainstream and especially in social media, about the role of aerosol transmission in COVID-19 and what this might mean to us. When people breathe or cough or sneeze or talk or sing, particles of various sizes are expelled. These can range from larger water droplets that tend to travel short distances and then settle out. And it can also include very small particles that can actually travel very long distances. The overwhelming evidence that we have from multiple epidemiologic studies done right from the outset of this pandemic, as well as an abundance of clinical experience, tells us that the primary the most important mode of transmission of COVID-19 is at short range through droplets and perhaps close contact. Our workplace health and safety teams have been reviewing every single infection in healthcare workers right from the onset of this pandemic. And we can be confident that the guidance that we've provided for personal protective equipment including continuous masking and eye protection, has been effective at protecting our frontline staff. There is a possibility, of course, of generating small infectious particles during certain medical procedures that are called aerosol generating medical procedures. And of course, from the beginning, we've recommended that the respiratory protection of choice during an aerosol generating medical procedure is a fit tested N95 respirator. As I'd mentioned, there has been some recent interest in the possibility that COVID-19 might be spread through small aerosols. And this has come about particularly in non-healthcare settings, in settings outside of our healthcare facilities. The concern is particularly about areas, indoor settings, that might be crowded, cramped with poor ventilation. The kinds of settings where this has been raised is for example, in, in fitness classes, perhaps in restaurants, in nightclubs, in office settings, and in places of worship. As you know, and as we've spoken about previously, the joint statement was refreshed together with our health unions a couple of months ago. And that joint statement, the updated joint statement, provides all frontline professionals with the authority to make decisions 
about the PPE that is necessary for your protection based on your point of care risk or hazard assessment and your professional judgment. While we know that following our existing PPE guidance, including continuous masking and continuous eye protection works and does protect staff, there may be some unique situations that may be slightly higher risk and in which a frontline worker may consider choosing an N95 respirator over a procedure mask. So for example, a situation where it might be anticipated that there will be very close and very prolonged contact with a patient in a confined space, and perhaps that patient is actively coughing and is in the very first few days of the infection when we know that they're more infectious. That is a situation that might be slightly higher risk and in which a healthcare provider may choose an N95 respirator over a surgical mask or procedure mask. So just to repeat and to emphasize, we've been monitoring our guidance closely all the way along. And we know that the guidance that we've been providing does protect our staff and physicians while they're at work. I've tried to provide an example where the risk might be a little bit higher and in which a worker may use their professional judgment to adapt their personal protective equipment. Let me end by saying that this pandemic is wearing on all of us. Thank you for all that you're doing. Please get vaccinated and stay safe. Together, we do amazing things every day.